All right, YouTubers, Jeff Lindsay in the garage. It is Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. Hope everybody had a great one. Um, it's pretty early in the morning, about 10 a.m., and in an attempt to help a couple of YouTubers, uh, fellow subscribers, um, I'm going to go through this rotisserie that I made with hopes that it will be enough to uh, give some instruction and enlightenment on how to build one of these. But I will say up front, uh, if you don't have any structural fabrication skills or welding, uh, keep in mind, you're gonna have your classic car on this rotisserie. And if you've never done any heavy welding I would not suggest building one of these rotisseries to put your car on it. Um, if you're a first time welder or even second or third time welder, just uh, maybe find somebody that can help you out that has uh, done some, some heavier welding. Um, and just keep in mind, it's your car and it's your body, uh, your life <laughs> on the line. If you put your car on one of these that you make and twirl it around. Uh, so just, you know, an FYI, be careful. Uh, if you decide to build one of these, uh, I, I assume no liability. <laughs> That's a fact. Uh, because these cars, even stripped down, uh, are still pretty heavy. And... Uh, and you're gonna have this thing up on this thing four feet off the floor, flipping it over and around and about. And uh, just, just keep in mind, there are some stress points on these things that, that if not properly uh, fabricated, welded, uh, is gonna give you a problem and you could lose your car. You could do some serious damage to the car or yourself. So we're gonna get started. We're gonna try to keep this thing around 15 minutes um first off uh i did use some uh video reference uh off of youtube when i built this one so uh keep that in mind also there there's several websites uh several youtube videos that that will be helpful if this one is not exactly what you need so uh first off the base of the rotisserie is the same on the front and the back. I used 11 gauge three by three square tubing. And those measurements are as follows. Across the bottom, four feet. And in the center, 31 inches. They have an upright that is thirty two inches high. Both are gusseted or braced in three directions and these braces probably aren't critical but just to give you an example the side braces are fifteen inches and this center brace is about 10. And that pretty much completes the base uh, of both the front and back of the rotisserie. Um, I do have swivel casters under the three points. And they were just casters that I had for a, a different project that I welded on up underneath there. Uh, I think those are three inch and they're just a plastic wheel. They're, they're nothing, you know, get something that's going to get something that's going to hold a few hundred pounds a piece to be safe. You know, if they're 300 pound rigs, you're looking at three, six, nine, 1800 pounds stripped down. This car is probably a thousand, maybe. So, uh, the back of the rotisserie. And uh, one other thing is this rotisserie was built for this car. Uh, you would have to build uh, different arms if you were gonna put a different vehicle on this rotisserie. 
<clears throat> Coming out of the three by three by 11 gauge, we used a two and a half inch square tubing. And it's gonna be about the same length as this one. This, this piece will drop all the way down inside and, it'll, and that gives you the travel you need. The reason you need that travel is when you spin this rotisserie, when your car's on it, you need to clear that bottom piece. You don't want your car hitting that. So when you spin the rotisserie with your car on it, and it ends up in this position, you want your car to clear by this, you don't want it hitting. So you need that travel. You need to be able to adjust this point here, up and down. And again, that was 31 inches. Um, the pivot points on the back, this is, I think it was two and a half. This is two. Yeah, this is just black pipe. You'll find uh, what you need to make inside with each piece. I believe it's two and a half and two. And you'll weld to that. I put a gusset for strength here. Uh, this piece has the two inch welded to it. This is a piece of two and a half. You need the two and a half square tubing because the two inch is gonna made inside of it. And that's about a five inch piece, I believe. Yep, five inches. Um, you'll drill a center hole because this piece needs to travel to find the center of gravity, the center of your car, actually. Uh, if you don't have this piece so you can adjust to this center line, your car could be off balance and just flop to the heaviest side, whether it be the top or the bottom. That's a critical point in the, in the whole deal right there is to get your car centered up and down before you try to flip it over. On this one, I had it where I could unlock that in. I could flip this car over with one finger. I mean, it was balanced perfectly. A uh, little bit of the luck of the draw, but I did have to do some, some figuring to get that right, and you will also have to do some figuring on that. Um, the back piece, four feet. That's two inch square tubing. And again, going back to the two and a half, you want to be able to, when you build this piece to mount up to the tail panel of that Camaro, uh, these mounted inside the bumper bracket holes. And if you don't have a tail panel or bumper brackets inside the trunk, you're going to have to figure out what you need to go up under that car and mount probably to the leaf spring point. Um, so I, I had some, if you'll go back and look at my videos, I had some issues with that. I, had, I actually, when I put the tail panel on, I had an old dresser that I would slide up under the car at about 31 inches or so, 32 inches, and take this out of the way so I could work on the back end of my car. So uh, these are just built to mount up to the bumper bracket, the bumper hole where the bumper actually goes in. Uh, I did make these adjustable. They would slide in and out so I would get the width right of those holes. That pretty much tells you about the back end of the rotisserie. The front end is pretty similar. It's a little bit different. Uh, the same 2 inch 11 gauge tubing here. 4 feet long. We've got 5 inch by 2 and a half. And you'll have to check the gauge of this piece to make sure it slides on. If you get this, I think, over like 3 sixteenths wall, it might not slide over this 2 inch. These pieces right here are 2 by 3 by 3 sixteenths wall, and they come out 8 inches. These mount to the, where, the, where the subframe mounts that point right there they slide right up under there the bolt goes all the way up through that hole and mounts to the car the body of the car those need to be adjustable obviously in and out so you can get 
uh, the right width. <clears throat> Very similar in this area here to the back one and in, in this area here. You'll need to drill holes in this piece so you can find that center point right through the center of the car. In other words, right through the, the center of the car. You want that car to be balanced. Um, same deal here as in the back, 10 inches. And this piece here, I think, was 12. I ran all the way through originally. I just had a lock here. I came back later and built this disc. It's seven and a half inches. I drilled half inch holes all the way around. And then I put these two tabs up here with a stop. That way I could stop that car at any point I wanted to and work on it. I could, I could have it at a 90 degree angle. I could have it at a 45 and everything in between. And you just use these holes and you run a rod through there and it'll stop that car whatever position you want to be in. Uh, on a store-bought rotisserie, you would have a hydraulic jack here or a bottle jack. And the reason for that would be able to let this down pretty low, but you're still going to have to jack that car up to get it on this rotisserie. Uh, I used an engine hoist and jack stands to get that car up high enough to get it to mount. And that is sketchy, it's tricky. Uh, I would suggest some, uh, some help when you start to try to put your car on this rotisserie. Uh, you know, I did it by myself, but I got, I had plenty of tools, I had plenty of stuff to work with, it wasn't all that bad. I ended up adding this piece in here to hook that uh, jack to and pick that, pick that uh, piece up and actually run it up through this one whenever I hooked it all up to the car. So, again, if you decide to build one of these rotisseries, be careful, make sure you do your homework. Uh, make sure that you got some help. I would definitely suggest a couple extra bodies to help hold things and bolt things as you attempt to put that car on the rotisserie. Uh, one other thing is a connecting piece in the center. I did not use one, but I would suggest that you get a piece of tubing, two and a half inch, 11 gauge or whatever to go inside this three inch. Uh, on these connecting points like this, I drilled my center hole and then welded a nut and then dry and then start a bolt to go and that, that'll give you some stopping points. That will that way you don't have to drill holes every two or three inches on this piece. I put one on the outside and one on the top. Uh, on the back, I didn't do that. All I did was once I found out where it mounted up, I drilled a through hole here and just dropped the bolt in and nutted it up. So that's kind of where we at with that. Uh, I hope that you have good luck if you attempt to build this rotisserie. And again, it's always uh, a good thing to have some help. Be careful with it. Like I say, you don't want to drop your car. I mean, that's going to create a lot of headache for you, a lot, a lot more repair to make. But again, this is for my car. It's not something that you could take and use on a different car right away without having to, to modify your mounting points. So... I hope this helps and I hope you got something out of it. And if, uh, if you have any questions, leave comments. I'll do my best to answer them. All right, YouTube.